So now we have already talked about central carbon metabolism and the related pathways, glycolysis, pentososate pathway, TCA cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. And we have also talked about the one of the major links between uh, catabolism and anabolism, so ATP, NADH, NADPH production. Now we will go on. We will talk about anabolic pathways this time, biosynthetic pathways, and we will also talk about precursor metabolites, which are very, very important as a link between catabolism and anabolism. The figure is from Essential Cell Biology book. So, this is the central carbon metabolism. Only the pantosociate pathway is not shown here, but glucose is converted to pyruvate. We have TCA cycle starting from citrate and ending with oxaloacetate with cyclic behavior. And there's ATP and NADH, NADPH production in this road. So NADH and NADPH, they are referred as cofactors most of the time. Other than ATP, NADH, and NADPH production in the central carbon metabolism, there is also the production of precursor metabolites. What does this mean? Remember, I have shared a figure with you. The substrate nutrients, they are broken down into smaller pieces. And like a Lego, those smaller pieces are later used to make bigger molecules within the anabolic pathways. So those smaller units, smaller pieces are called precursor metabolites. So within this uh, central carbon metabolism, there are 12 metabolites which act as metabolic precursors, which are later used for the synthesis of other bigger molecules in the anabolic reactions. So precursor metabolites are the metabolites that are used in the synthesis of amino acids, fatty acids, nucleosides, etc. in the anabolic reactions. And here you see them. One precursor metabolite is glucose 6-phosphate, for example. It is used in the synthesis of nucleotides in the anabolic reactions. One is 3-phosphoglycerate within the glycolytic pathway. It is used for the synthesis of amino acid serine. Pyruvate is also a uh, precursor metabolite. It is used for the synthesis of amino acid alanine. Citrate is also a precursor metabolite. It is used in the synthesis of cholesterol and fatty acids. alpha ketoglutarate is also a precursor metabolite because it is used in the synthesis of amino acid glutamate, other amino acids, and also in the synthesis of nucleotides, pre-nucleotides. The same with oxaloacetate, succinyl QA, etc. Dehydroxyacetone phosphate, for example, this three carbon molecule, it is also a precursor metabolite used in the synthesis of lipids. Just another figure, this time from Microbiology book of Prescott, uh, of the precursor metabolites and uh, the molecules they are used uh, So here you see the list of precursor metabolites. Uh, we have glucose 6-phosphate, we have pyruvate, others. And again, you see how they are linked to the synthesis of uh, the biosynthetic uh, molecules. Oxaloacetate, so this is a little bit more detailed. Oxaloacetate, for example, is used as a precursor metabolite for the synthesis of amino acid aspartate. Then aspartate is used for the synthesis of other amino acids, asparagine, Theronine, isoleucine, methionine, and lysine. So, oxaloacetate is indirectly used 
for the synthesis of those other amino acids. Also, aspartate is used for the synthesis of pyrimidines, nucleotides. Again, oxalate is required for this because it is used to make aspartate. The same with alpha ketoglutarate. It is directly used for the synthesis of amino acid glutamate. And glutamate is later used to make three other amino acids, glutamine, proline, and arginine. So I think you got the generic idea. We have 12 precursor metabolites within central carbon metabolism. These metabolites are later used to make other bigger molecules which take place in the anabolic reactions in the biosynthetic pathways. Here you see more detailed roads from precursors to the uh, biosynthetic metabolites, a figure from Metabolic Engineering Principles book. So as you see, alpha ketoglutrate is used within a single reaction step to make glutamate. And within, again, a single reaction, glutamate is converted to glutamine. Then glutamate through five sequential reactions is converted to ornithine and ornithine is converted to arginine through three reactions and glutamate can also convert it to proline through three reactions and alpha ketoglutrate is also a precursor for lysine through nine se sequential reactions so this figure nicely shows how precursor metabolites are linked to the uh, amino acids. And as you see, for some amino acids, there, there's just one reaction necessary to derive them from the precursor metabolite. But for the other amino, acid, uh, amino acids, as you see here, for example, for tryptophan, 12 reactions are needed to make tryptophan from erythrose, 4 phosphate, and uh, phosphenol pyruvate uh, precursors from glycolysis and pantose phosphate pathway. Or histidine amino acid is made from uh, ribose 5-phosphate, a precursor metabolite within pantose phosphate pathway, and 11 reactions are required to make histidine from ribose 5-phosphate. And I wanted to show you the chemical structures of amino acids. Uh, remember, the starting point is glucose, which has six carbon molecule. Glucose is the most common substrate, the most common nutrient food for the metabolic reactions. And the six carbon unit is used first to make precursor metabolites. Some of the precursor metabolites have six carbons, some of them has five, four, three, or two carbons. Then these precursor metabolites are used to make amino acids, for example. So this uh, for formation of amino acids from precursor metabolites is uh, uh, anabolic, uh, a part of anabolic pathway. So we have 20 different amino acids you see that some of them are more complex, some of them are less complex. The simplest amino acid in terms of the carbon structure is glycine. And there are much more complex ones, as you see, arginine, for example, it has so many carbons. Uh, and there is these cyclic structures, again, very complex in terms of the number of carbons involved. But as you see, those amino acids are not very big molecules compared to glucose. Glucose had six carbon. So in those amino acids, you see uh, some has two carbon, some three, four, five, maybe 10, 11. It's not like 100 carbons are available. We are still talking about small molecules here. And 
Remember our goal, we want to use metabolic networks to simulate the cell behavior. So for this, we need to document the list of reactions. Here you see how glutamate is made from alpha ketoglutrate uh, in a single reaction by consuming NADPH. So remember, NADH and NADPH, they are formed in the central carbon metabolism. Later, they are used for biosynthetic reactions. So here, NADPH produced in pantose phosphate pathway, for example, is used to make glutamine. Or NADH produced in TCA cycle or glycolysis is used to make uh, glutamate from alpha ketoglutrate and glutamine. So here you see the synthesis of aspartate from oxaloacetate and the synthesis of asparagine from aspartate. As you see, again, ATP is used. So some of the energy is used to make uh, those biosynthetic products. Again, leucine valine metabolism, the other amino acids. Again, these are all from uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the genes are uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae genes, but more or less those pathways are common between microorganisms to uh, mammalian cells. And serine and glycine metabolism, so uh, three phosphoglycerate from glycolysis is used to make uh, serine here, then serine is used to make glycine here. So, all those first center carbon metabolism reactions and the uh, synthesis of uh, anabolic products from precursor metabolism, precursor metabolites, make up this huge metabolic network. Remember, I shared this statistics with you. So the recent yeast 8 metabolic network includes about 4,000 reactions, about uh, 2,500 metabolites. So there is a very complex network indeed in the metabolism. Uh, some are catabolic reactions, some are anabolic reactions.